j'aimerais bien que vous nous parliez d'Anne McCullin de deux moments, qui Now, sont deux Don moments euh, très like différents, je pense l'un très instantané et l'autre plus which réfléchi, very, uh, deux moments de rupture. Le premier, et ce jour de 1968, a eu lieu en 1968 en Vietnam, où vous avez dit set up a photo. Now, in your book, Shaped by War, I, I quote, you said, I've only played with the truth once in my life. In single occasion, I moved objects to a range of pictures. I saw two American soldiers hunting for souvenirs from the body of a North Vietnamese soldier. He could have only been 18 or 19. And when they'd finished what I regarded as looting, I was disgusted. They called him a dead group. Now, I hated them. I was sharing their fruit, their uniform, their daily lives. They trampled on his possessions, his pictures of his mother, his sister, the little snapshots of Sikh children. He had a bullet through his teeth and the rest of his brains were shot out the back of his head. I felt he deserved protecting. I shoveled his belongings together and photographed them. That's the only contrived picture I've taken in a war. You don't need to contrive war pictures, but I'm not ashamed to say that I, uh, yes, I did it. He couldn't speak. I spoke for him. How can you be the messenger, the best messenger for people who are living in a situation of war and who die there? I could spend hours and hours trying to persuade you to believe in the futility of war. There are no words that can describe to you how I feel or any other photographer who stands in front of victims of war. Um, I feel maybe I've failed in trying to persuade you about war and how stupid and awful and evil it is. But regarding the photographing question is that I share the daily lives and the danger of these soldiers and I'm not condemning these soldiers. It's, they were young men. They were behaving the way young men who possibly felt their lives were on the line and they were doing what young, young soldiers do. When these men went away from this dead soldier, I was ashamed in a way. I, I thought, you know, why were they disregarding his sacrifice? He was a young man. He was a beautiful man, dead, looking. And by the way, I used to sleep very close to this dead soldier for two or three nights, not knowing he was there. And his eyes were open. And, and I don't want to romanticize death, but he was looking at the stars and it rained on many nights and his eyes were really covered in rain water. And I thought, this man deserves to have a voice. So I, I gathered his miserable, pathetic possessions together, showing pictures of his mother and his girlfriend maybe, and letters to his family and his mother. And, and I thought, you know, I didn't feel like I was criminally behaving badly as a photographer. Because in the 30s and maybe the 20s in, in, in photography, many photographers would have staged pictures. I thought this man deserved a voice, and I'm not ashamed of this picture. And I'm holding my hand up to say, I created this picture because I wanted to become the voice of this courageous 19-year-old man. So I don't have any shame about doing what I did. 